Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining today. We're going to give everyone just a minute to roll on in. As everyone is joining, I uh, have a, a quick poll for you. Uh, we're curious how many of you have participated in Cybersecurity Awareness Month in previous years. See, it looks like 60% of you have participated before, so welcome back. And welcome to everyone who's, uh, this is your first year, almost uh, 300 of you. Great, I think we can go ahead and get started. So hello everyone, thank you so much again for joining today. Uh, we're really excited to delve into this year's Cybersecurity Awareness Month campaign. My name is Jennifer Cook, I'm the Senior Director of Marketing at the National Cybersecurity Alliance, and uh, we're gonna share all that's in store for this year, so let's get started. Uh, just a few things to note, this webinar is being recorded. It will be available to everyone on staysafeonline.org as well as the Stay Safe Online YouTube channel. Uh, if you have questions at any time, please feel free to put the uh, questions in the Q&A box. We'll have plenty of time to answer them at the end of the presentation, uh, but if we don't get to them, we'll uh, provide our contact information uh, on the last few slides as well so you can reach out to us directly with any questions. And if there are any uh, members of the media tuning in, we just ask that you please direct any media inquiries to the email on the screen. That's sysamedia at sysa.dhs.gov. Uh, today, uh, please welcome Sarah Pease, the Deputy Associate Director for Strategic Relations at CISA. And I'll be speaking on behalf of the National Cybersecurity Alliance. So now I'll turn it over to Sarah to talk about CISA. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome and thank you so much for joining today. Um, for those that are new to us, um, give you a little overview. And for those that are familiar, here's just a friendly reminder of the work that we do. Um, CISA stands for the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. Um, and we are the nation's risk advisor working with partners to defend against uh, today's threats and collaborating to build more secure and resilient infrastructure for the future. Um, for those that have been familiar with the DHS space for a while, we formally went by, previously went by um, the name MPPB, um, and then about four years ago, um, changed to CISA uh, to more uh, poignantly describe what the work that we do. Um, we have six divisions and covering a, a wide variety of work. Um, doing partnership development, information sharing, capacity building, incident management and response, um, risk assessment analysis, network defense, and emergency communications. Next slide. Great, and uh, just a bit about the National Cybersecurity Alliance. We're a nonprofit organization. Some people know us as staysafeonline.org, but it's our mission to empower a more secure interconnected world. We've uh, partnered with CISA and DHS on Cybersecurity Awareness Month for many, many years. And we, throughout the year, create free resources and educational materials to help uh, anyone stay safe online, uh, students, seniors, families, small businesses, and organizations as well. And we have all of these resources and uh, toolkits available on our website. We also run uh, programs uh, for different audiences, like our HBCU Career Program, Data Privacy Week, which is in uh, January, and Cybersecure My Business, a program for small and mid-sized businesses. I'll turn it back to Sarah to kick us off with Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Thanks so much. Um, and we are here today to talk about Cybersecurity Awareness Month, um, which is coming up in October. This year, we are going to be celebrating 20 years, which is hard to believe. 
the first one launched in 2004. Um, and Cybersecurity Awareness Month is uh, managed by us, CISA, and we partner closely with NCA uh, to do a number of events, um, share materials, uh, get partners on board, and help spread the word about why cybersecurity is important and the steps that people can take to keep themselves safe um, and their families and loved ones safe online. Um, Cybersecurity Awareness Month is a collaboration uh, between the government and private industry. Um, and so that's why it's really important that we have calls like we're having today to really talk about how we can all work together. Um, cybersecurity can be a large topic that is hard for folks to you know, wrap up their heads around. Some people may feel like, oh, that, that belongs to somebody else, but really we each have a role to play. Um, and so it's really great that we can all come together and, and work on this um, and highlight the importance uh, during a, a month long event. Um, we, we want to make sure is that organizations such as y'all who are on this call have the resources and communications you need um, to talk not only to your employees, but also externally to whomever you work with, your clients, your stakeholders, um, and other groups that you work with on how, you know, what steps they can take to stay safe online. Um, as I mentioned before, this is the 20th year. Um, we're going to be having a big announcement coming in September. Um, CISA is creating a new awareness program that will be the um, umbrella um, awareness initiative for all um, everything that it does in terms of different individual campaigns or initiatives. Um, and so that uh, new program that we're going to be announcing is will will then be the theme for Cybersecurity Awareness Month and will be the enduring thing that we work on um, all year long. Next slide, please. Okay, hey, and uh, also a so, bit about, oh, uh, sorry. Um, so the so the goal for um, the new awareness program, as well as um, Cybersecurity Awareness Month, is that we want people to take actionable steps. Um, what are the behavior changes? What are the things that they can do to to, you know, keep themselves and their families, their employees, their businesses safer. Um, I think people are aware of, of what they can do. Um, you know, NCA has done a ton of research on this, as have other organizations. Um, but it's really trying to fill that gap of, OK, I'm aware that I need to do something, but what actually getting them to take those steps and make those changes. Um, you'll notice that the tone of everything will be very positive, very approachable. Um, it's very simple, and we're just keeping it to the basics. Next slide, please. Over to you, Jen. Yeah, and uh, to piggyback off of what Sarah said about the tone we're using, uh, the National Cybersecurity Alliance has been conducting research for several years uh, called our Cybersecurity Attitudes and Behaviors Report that has given us some interesting data to help inform Cybersecurity Awareness Month and the tone and tactics we're using. So in this report, we asked people about their feelings and attitudes towards cybersecurity. Uh, we've learned that, um, and this went out to uh, a thousand people in the US, a thousand people in the UK, and a thousand people in Canada. Um, we're repeating the report this year as well, uh, which will be ready before October. But we learned last year that 78% of people consider staying safe online a priority. So this is a topic that people care about. And 57% of respondents say they are worried about cybercrime and falling victim to cybercrime. However, 46% uh, reported feeling frustrated um, about staying secure online, and 39% of users felt information on how to stay secure online is confusing, uh, which has led us to approach Cybersecurity Awareness Month with the tone of being um, positive and approachable and simple. We don't want to add to any confusion. We don't want to add, you know, any jargon or anything that might, you know, turn people off and, or make them them click away. We've learned that scare tactics don't work and the, you know, scary image of a hacker in a hoodie doesn't work um, and it doesn't inspire people to take action, but positivity does. Uh, we also ask people about their feelings and behaviors around uh, certain topics. Um, I know there's a lot of information here, but I'll just quickly go over that. Uh, we learned that only 33% of people create unique passwords for all their accounts, and only 18% use a password manager. 43% of people have never heard of MFA. However, um, of the participants who have heard of it, 79% have 
used it and 94% are still using it. So we learned from that finding that once people adopt this behavior, they don't stop it. It becomes part of, uh, part of their life. We also learned that 92% of respondents actually took an action after receiving a security training, whether it was uh, recognizing and reporting phishing, using unique passwords, MFA, installing software updates. The security training does work and getting these messages out there does work, which, uh, and we'll talk about how you can get these messages out to your organization and what we recommend focusing on. I'll uh, turn it over to Sarah for some ways to get involved in overview of our key messages. Great, and I see some questions coming in. Um, some of them we'll get to here in a second, but I did just see someone say, can you display the information that is being discussed? Um, we are displaying it, so if you can't see it, um, let us know, but we have had slides up um, for a little bit, so hopefully y'all can see them. Okay, great, and some people are saying they can see it. Okay, great, thank you so much, Claudette. Um, okay. So the key messages um, this year, we will be focusing on um, the uh, four things that we, the four behaviors, the four actions that we hope people will be taking. Um, I did see there was a question in the chat around um, the report. Jen, your, um, the report that NCA put out, OBEHAVE, is available online. Isn't that correct? Yes, that's available online, and I'll have uh, Lucas on our team is in the background if he can uh, put a link to that in the chat for everyone that is available to download for free. Yeah, and there's lots of great data in there. Um, someone, I think, just asked in the chat, um, is this similar messaging to last year? It is because in the data in that report, in the, in the OBEHAVE, as well as some other uh, findings that we had, uh, you know, we did a, we've been doing a bunch of research as we've been de developing the new awareness program. Um, and it's really showing that for different age groups or different um, demographic groups that this is, um, these are the things, these are the gaps, this is still where things are happening. And so you'll be hearing from CISA, um, and you've probably already been hearing from, um, from the agency, from the director and from others really talking, uh, urging um, manufacturers and others to uh, have secure by design develop, um, whether it's uh, technology or software, or whatever, have it secure by design, secure by default. Um, and so as that change is happening and, and that work is being done with um, the developers and the manufacturers, et cetera, um, these are the things that we're really encouraging people, everyday citizens, small businesses, medium-sized businesses to take to keep themselves um, and their families and their businesses safe. Because um, this is where a lot of the vulnerabilities are happening. Next slide, please. So if you are interested in getting involved, um, we do have a number of resources that we'll be providing to folks. Um, I saw some questions come up um, in uh, in the chat around when will stuff be available. Um, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we can um, try to navigate some of that with you. Um, anything that will be very clear that the toolkits that we post um, and the materials that we post, you are able to reuse them. Um, in some instances, we do uh, actually provide a place if you have like materials that you want to put out that you want to add your logo to. Um, and so all of those materials we will make available to you. Feel free to reach out to us. And um, they'll also be available online. We're working on those web pages and stuff right now. All right, Jen, back to you. Great, thank you. Um, another uh, great way to start getting involved in Cybersecurity Awareness Month is to sign up to become a champion through NCA's website. Uh, our champions program is one we've run for several years and champions represent those dedicated to promoting a safer, more secure and more trusted internet. Actually, last year we had over 6,000 organizations and individuals sign up. You can sign up either on behalf of an organization or on your own. And they came from 129 countries, so you can sign up for from any country. It's completely free. Um, any organization that signs up will have their name listed on our website at staysafeonline.org. Um, however, if you would prefer not to have your name listed, just send us an email and that's totally fine. 
Uh, champions also receive updates on the campaign, upcoming events, materials, and additional helpful resources from NCA and CISA. So we uh, send you everything you need to know about the campaign, new materials as they're coming out, uh, and we make sure you're aware of everything else that's available to help you start building the key messages and theme into your, into your campaign. So that is available to sign up at the link on the screen. Uh, so we have a number of resources coming out. Um, we will have a partner toolkit that lists all the different ways to get involved, even uh, in addition to the ones that we'll discuss in a moment on this webinar. Also sample media posts and graphics, uh, sample articles, uh, tip sheets, press releases and emails, and all of this can be customized. A lot you can add your logo to. There will be virtual conference backgrounds, uh, an email signature template, infographics on each of the four behaviors, and a presentation you and your organization can use to talk about the campaign. So please stay tuned. Um, again, if you sign up as a champion, you'll be the first to be notified when all of those materials become available, but this will be available for, for everyone to use as well. So I'm going to go into a few ways to get involved in Cybersecurity Awareness Month and run your own campaigns. Uh, in at, either at work, in your community, at home, or online. And these are uh, some examples that we've seen over the years that have been very popular with our partners. And we've also, uh, if anybody's participated before or signed up as a champion before, we've surveyed you about you know, your activities and we've seen a lot of really great creative ideas that we're sharing some screenshots of and examples of in these slides. So. The first thing on here, I just want to mention, uh, easy way to get involved is just to publicize and talk about Cybersecurity Awareness Month, mention it, and the key messages in your resources and activities, uh, whether that's posting to your intranet site or your website externally, uh, sending emails to employees and customers. Uh, we'll have that sample employee email template. You can also, you know, take copy um, and tips on the key messages from NCA's website. Um, we've seen a lot of companies offer promotions as well. It doesn't have to be anything, you know, too expensive or extensive, but if it's a, a product discount, for example, or hosting, uh, having good giveaways for either customers, clients, or hosting a contest too for employees. We've seen a lot of people uh, take this opportunity to host fishing simulations and contests, giving out prizes to employees. Um, we've seen a lot of groups do poster contests for students as well, making it part of assignments if you do work at a K-12 school or a university. And if you are a you know security professional, sometimes we know you focus a lot about what you can do for employees, but don't forget about your family at home as well. All of these tips, again, with the key messages are back to basics and can be shared with anyone. So share them with your kids, with your parents, with your friends and other family members to make sure that they know how to stay safe online. Uh, you can do this by hosting a family tech talk, talking to your family members and maybe discuss specifically uh, topics relevant to your family. You know, how can you, what devices do you have in your house? How can you protect those devices? Maybe you want to talk about how to, you know, download a family password manager to be able to easily share passwords with each other and personal information. And just in general, creating a culture of security in your family as well, making sure that your family members, whether it's your, your kids or your parents, feel comfortable coming to you if there's an issue and that, you know, you'll be there to help work them through it and that there's no, you know, shame in clicking on the wrong link that you are all there to work on. Uh, online safety together. And in your community, we are, uh, we know a, a lot of people, especially on this call and security professionals, you all know these basics. Um, they might sound repetitive to you, but there are still a lot of people that don't follow basic cyber hygiene or still need to know these four tips. So all of you have something to share. All of you have some knowledge to share, and we encourage you to volunteer in your communities and teach others about online safety. You could reach out to, for example, your kid's school um, or a you know boy or girl scout troop 
a library or community center, a senior center, or maybe present to your place of worship. Uh, we actually have a, a toolkit on our website. The link is uh, included here and is also sent out to champions with uh, tips for how to volunteer in your community. We take you step by step for best uh, of the best practices. And we also provide sample presentations to go to different audiences like kids, teenagers, seniors, and talking points in those presentations as well. So we have a lot of tips on how to talk about cybersecurity that's not only relevant for going out in your community, but also just for talking to employees and others as well, you know, um, focusing on just a few different topics, for example, instead of everything, uh, avoiding jargon or the use of acronyms unless they're defined right away. And again, following that tone of voice, not using fear, uncertainty, or doubt, but using uh, positivity, making cybersecurity approachable, because it is something that impacts every one of us individually in our homes, it impacts our finances and our kids, and coming at it with that approachable attitude can make people a lot more receptive to that message. So if you do plan on volunteering, uh, which we, we again highly encourage you to do, we do suggest reaching out to these places early uh, so they can fit you into their schedules. And even if you can't uh, you know, volunteer in October, this is just a great thing to do year round as well. Also online is a great place to get involved, whether it is through your organization or just as an individual. We encourage all of you to join the conversation on social media platforms using the hashtag Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Uh, again, we'll have sample social media posts and graphics that you can share, you can take, you can change the copy and do whatever you like with them. And then, um, also sharing your own blog posts. Again, maybe that's to a intranet site or your organization's website. We see a lot of people take the copy that we share and put them into a blog post. They might edit it or they might focus on completely different topics. Maybe you are very focused on AI and what your organization should do when using ChatGBT. You know, you can write an article about that too, tie it into Cybersecurity Awareness Month. And if you're promoting it, make sure to use that hashtag because we're always online looking for people that are participating and we want to help amplify your educational materials as well. I'll turn it back over to Sarah. Great, thanks Jen. Um, and there are four things to keep in mind um, when building a strong cybersecurity culture. Um, the first is to kind of meet people where they're at. So use basic cybersecurity training. Um, this, there are some people who things are, you know, cyber is very new to them. Um, you know, as we have been doing our research and developing our new awareness program, uh, older adults seem to be uh, a real mixed bag where there are some users, but a lot of people shy away from it, or they'll tend to use, you know, one, one medium over another. And so um, if you can find some good trainings and get them introduced to it, help, help them really kind of become familiar, understand what the concepts are and some basic things that they can do um, to keep themselves safe. That's, that's a great thing. Um, also, you can identify um, additional cybersecurity training resources. Um, you know, there are a variety out there on specific topics, um, good email practices, um, you know, uh, and you can find these through NCA professional associations. I think CISA has some good ones online, you know, references some. So, um, definitely check check those out. Um, and then you want to make sure you're staying current on cybersecurity events and incidents. Um, you know, there, there often are, um, you know, things that we will see in the news or you'll get some sort of notice about data breaches. Um, just keep an eye out for that stuff. Um, you know, don't need to totally fixate it, but just keep, a, keep your eye out for it. That way, you know, if there's something in your area or that might impact you, you can take uh, extra precautions um, or be extra vigilant about what's happening. Um, and then finally, for those of you that, um, you know, are either may have your own business or um, oversee employees, encourage them to make good choices online. Help them understand, um, you know, what to look for, uh, what not to click on, um, and just, you know, really, really be aware of what's happening. Great. And we also know Cybersecurity Awareness Month is a popular time to host events. We have a number of events to share, but also wanted to 
share some tips on hosting your own Cybersecurity Awareness Month event. So we've seen a lot of you hosting lunch and learns and webinars and uh, different competitions. We have an example here that we saw last year of a fish market with games and prizes. Uh, so we recommend starting by identifying your audience and the be behavior you want to change or influence. So if you're planning something for your organization, is this event for uh, organization-wide for every employee? Is it for a specific department or a team? And what do you want those people to take away from the event? Maybe you want to share a four key messages, or maybe your organization is really focused on something else. Maybe you're trying to get everybody to use the company-wide VPN. Don't be afraid to make the event just about that VPN. Show people how to use it and walk them through it and encourage that one behavior change. Also, again, going back to the tone of voice, keeping the learning experience lighthearted and fun, relatable and interactive. Cybersecurity, we know, is a serious topic and can be scary, but again, that uh, fear isn't a great motivator for behavior change, and we have seen a lot of uh, great success from our partners doing these fun events like the fish market, having different competitions. We see a lot of Halloween-themed events since it's October, kind of playing on the like trick-or-treat, don't-get-tricked uh, theme, which is a lot of fun and very engaging. We also recommend showing buy-in from the C-suite, maybe making sure that company leadership is at the event and showing that this is a priority for them, that they care. Um, you can also invite an outside speaker and we'll explain how to do that uh, with CISA and NCA in a moment. Also remembering to follow up if there are any key takeaways from your events or materials or resources that you really wanna make sure people have make sure to send them an email afterwards with everything they need. So again, making the events relatable, telling stories, make it personal to their at-home lives as well. People will pay a lot more attention if these tips uh, are related back to their home life and their families, as well as to their organizations and their jobs. Uh, also, just uh, some other ideas for keeping it interactive. Uh, we do see a lot of people Again, do these games and competitions. Uh, we have gotten some questions before about giveaways and uh, physical materials. So we recommend um, you can print out uh, the tip sheets in your toolkit as handouts and give them out at the events. We also recommend uh, the FTC actually has a bulk order website where you can order publications on cybersecurity topics. And we heard from some of you last year, actually, that you reached out to your security vendors and managed service providers and asked them to provide branded giveaways, which many of them are involved in Cybersecurity Awareness Month and would be more than happy to send, you know, fun swag and, and items to your organization to give out to employees or at different events. So that's another route we recommend and has been very successful for a lot of our partners. So noticed a few questions in the chat about requesting a speaker. Um, and so I tried to answer a few of them, um, but the chat was going quickly. So hopefully this is helpful right here. Um, so basically, if you are requesting a speaker, uh, someone from CISA, and again, just to give you that don't want to do a whole CISA 101 right now, but um, we have our headquarters component um, in the DC area. Um, and then we also have 10 regions. Um, the country is broken into regions. Um, and there are 10 uh, with multiple states in each region. So we have folks that can come from headquarters or from the field. Um, and so if you are interested in having someone come speak at an event, especially for Cybersecurity Awareness Month, um, please go to um, follow the links here. Um, we can copy and paste them to put them in the chat as well, if that's easier. Um, and then you will submit that to cisa.speakers at cisa.dhs.gov. Um, and my, I have a team that will manage this, that will check in on this. Um, please make sure that if you do want someone to speak for Cybersecurity Awareness Month, you do your best to get it in by August 18th. Um, we are uh, flooded with um, requests. And so we do our very best to try to get folks to, um, to you know, fulfill as many requests as we can. Um, the longer folks wait, the more challenging that becomes because everybody's calendar gets very full for October. So um, if you would like to request a speaker, um, please follow those steps for CISA. Um, NCA, it is a separate process. So, um, you know, uh, 
Jen, do you want to talk a little bit about um, how things work for NCA? Sure. Yeah, we have a link online where you can request a speaker. We are doing things a little differently this year. We're offering a series of new uh, gamified presentations. They focus very heavily on the four key messages, but we'll also have uh, trivia and games uh, throughout the month. So you can sign up for a presentation and you can invite employees for, from your organization to join as well and play along. Um, if you are requesting a speaker for a big group presentation, if you expect to have a few hundred or a few thousand employees attend, uh, we do have specific, uh, you know, individual presentations available as well. So you can reach out to us through the link on the screen. Just tell us a bit about your event and what you'd, uh, what you'd uh, like, and uh, we'll uh, set up a call with you to speak about it. There are uh, a number of other events coming up for Cybersecurity Awareness Month. So if you don't want to plan your own, uh, you can join one of ours. Uh, first off, starting off in September, we have two in-person events. Both are in the DC area. So if you're local to DC or you're coming into town, uh, I'd like to highlight our convened security training and awareness conference, which will be at the Watergate Hotel in DC. This is a, a two-day conference um, all about different topics in security training. Um, it's a great opportunity to network with other folks that are responsible for training employees and who, oops, sorry, want to uh, learn best practices uh, for education. We talk a lot about behavioral science and some findings in terms of, uh, you know, how people react to cybersecurity and the behaviors they take. At the end of Convene, we are also uh, having a in-person celebration for the 20th Cybersecurity Awareness Month, uh, which you can purchase a, a ticket for separately if you're interested or if you'd like to come to Convene. That includes a ticket to the celebration. And in October, we'll have two virtual events. We're kicking off the month uh, celebrating 20 years of Cybersecurity Awareness Month uh, with a virtual event that's open and free for everyone to attend. We'll have uh, representatives uh, from federal agencies, from the private sector, elected representatives as well, with a specific focus on uh, cybersecurity initiatives in the United States. But again, this is open for anyone to attend. And then on October 11th, we're having a cyber chat, uh, what we used to call a Twitter chat, but will now be on the platform X. Uh, so this is a conversation where we send you some pre-drafted questions and ask you to chime in using this hashtag online, um, sharing your resources, your advice, um, sometimes jokes and, and fun images uh, with the rest of the cybersecurity community. So you can learn more and register for all of these events on the link on the screen, uh, which is our events page. And if you are hosting your own event, uh, especially one that is open to the public, let us know and we can add it to our partner calendar, which is a section of this web page. If you send over the event details, uh, the title and a link to your event, we can add that. Uh, you can just email that to info at staysafeonline.org. I'll turn it back over to Sarah. Great, thank you. Um, so for next steps, um, again, if you have questions that are pertaining specifically to Cybersecurity Awareness Month and you would like to partner with us if you're trying to work on um, collateral um, or what have you uh, here, please reach out to awarenesscampaigns at cisa.dhs.gov. Um, please, please send any inquiries there. Um, we'll work with you to the best of our ability to get you what you need. Um, we do have, based on um, what has been used in the past and interest, um, we have a toolkit that is comprised of our most popular um, collateral, so we can, we can work with you on that. Um, also, as I mentioned, we do have 10 regions. Um, you, if you're interested in learning more about um, your uh, what region you fall in or what's happening there, um, please go to cisa.gov slash about slash regions. Um, we also have CISA Central. This is really a great way for us to work with our critical infrastructure um, and cybersecurity partners and, and uh, stakeholders. Um, so if you are um, looking to reach us through there, you can do central at cisa.dhs.gov. Um, and then if you have a cyber issue, um, you can report it anonymously um, uh, via report at or by calling that phone number. 
Um, also, if you are on social media, please feel free to follow us at CISA.gov. Um, and uh, you can see latest and greatest of what we have to offer. And just uh, if you're looking to get in contact with the National Cybersecurity Alliance, our website is staysafeonline.org. And I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, we have a lot of free resources, articles, and toolkits, a lot of them around the four key behaviors as well that you are welcome to, to use, to copy, download. You do not need our permission to do any of that. And you can also follow us online um, at Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. We're on Instagram and YouTube as well. Uh, which is also where we'll be posting about Cybersecurity Awareness Month a lot leading up to October and during October. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to email us. Our email is info at staysafeonline.org. And with that, uh, we are happy to spend the uh, rest of the hour taking questions. We do have a lot that's come in, so bear with us as we go through and we'll try to get to as many as possible. All right, Jen, first one, do you have a recommended training? Uh, so we don't have a recommended training. Um, kind of broad, I think, encourage folks to try to figure out what it is that they're, um, what kind of training they're looking for. Cause I think as we, we chatted about in the training section, finding training to meet, um, whether it's you or whomever you're working with, where they're at. So I don't know if there's one silver bullet um, for training, but there are a number of trainings out there. You can look on our websites to see what's recommended. Um, so I would encourage you to go to um, NCA and CISA's websites to, to see um, based on what you're looking for, what's recommended. And if you can always reach out to us through the emails and we can try to help work with you further, um, that'd be great. Um, someone asked, when will the OBEHAVE report release? Um, I think the one you're referencing, Jen, was released in 2022, um, defer to you on if there's one. Yeah, so the 2023 report will be released the first week in October. Um, I know it's mentioned here that um, it'd be great to have the latest information and materials before then, but I do encourage you to use the 2022 report for any stats and information. It's what we'll be using in our communications and materials as well, uh, but we will be sure to let you know as soon as that 2023 report is available. Great. Um, timeline for the toolkit, that's going to be um, in the next um, month or so. Um, we'll have that. If, if you have needs for sooner, please reach out to the assist, uh, so the CISA email, awarenesscampaigns at cisa.dhs.gov or through NCA, um, and we can, we can try to talk with you. Um, the theme has not been announced. That will be announced um, in September. Um, we're going to be having announcing the program, the new awareness program for CISA, um, under which all awareness initiatives and campaigns are going to roll up under. Um, so please stay tuned for that announcement. Um, that will um, not only be our evergreen awareness program, but it will be the theme for Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Yep, and just to piggyback off of Sarah, so once that theme is announced, you'll be able to use it next year to get uh, right on ahead with your planning for 2024. But um, yep, in the meantime, we also encourage you to focus on those four key messages. Uh, there's a question here about the slide deck for this presentation. So this slide deck will be shared with all registrants after the presentation along with the recording. Are there any print materials that are able to be sent to partners? Um, so we will have collateral that you can use. It, it, everything will be digital. So the toolkits that we reference um, are available online. So if you choose to print anything, you absolutely can. Um, also, I think we got this question a few times. What if we just want the wording? Um, that will be available to you. So you can put that in your own, um, you know, if a university has their look and feel or whatever. So um, yes, that content will be available. So everything will be available in the toolkit. Um, do we need to yeah. sign up as champions again if we sign up last year? Yes, um, I would encourage you to. Yeah, and that's a way we can ensure that you get the latest materials. So we do ask you to sign up again as a champion. I also see a question about signing up as an individual champion. Um, so if you sign up as an individual champion, we do not list your name on our website. Uh, we'll just list uh, organizations.
Let's see. There are a few questions about uh, links to the resources. Again, everything uh, will be provided after the webinar. Any additional resources we talked about as well will be included in a follow-up email, which you'll receive soon. Um. Sorry, these are like flipping by. <laughs> uh, um, so there, oh, go ahead. oh, I just uh, one question here about if uh, you can modify the articles and personalize them. Uh, yes, please do. Uh, you're welcome to, again, take the, the copy, um, put them into your own resources and uh, modify them. I see a question here about what communication methods are um, organizations using successfully? Our organization suffers from email fatigue. Um, so we actually have done a bunch of research around that and really it's kind of by demographic. I, I couldn't speak to your specific organization. Um, obviously I'm not there, so I, I don't know, but um, a couple things I would encourage you to do. I would, I would um, ask your organization, maybe do some sort of survey or poll um, or have conversations on how folks would um, prefer to receive information. Um, I've worked in communications my entire career, and honestly, it's about meeting people where they're at, so meeting them in their preferred channels. Um, and you may have to have a couple of different avenues to reach people. Um, we have found in our research that based on demographics, there's different things. So whether it's, um, you know, for older adults, um, you know, actual collateral that comes in the mail, or, um, you know, newspapers or other things, obviously for uh, different generational groups, everything is online, um, social media might be a preferred method, um, text messages, what have you. So I would encourage you to talk to your workforce and figure out what works best. Um, I am not familiar about a poster contest. Jen, are you able to speak to that? Yeah, so that's something that we see other partners uh, do for Cybersecurity Awareness Month a lot of times at a K through 12 school, um, usually asking students to draw or create a poster that shows some sort of, you know, cybersecurity practice or gets across a certain cybersecurity message. So uh, that's just a fun way to especially get kids involved, but also, um, you know, in your organization as well, maybe having an event, for example, in person that gets a little crafty. Um, we just encourage you to, you know, to get creative um, and have your employees or students talk about what cybersecurity and online safety means for them. Um, I'm sorry, I'm kind of jumping around based on what's coming, what's coming in because the questions keep flipping. Um, I've seen a few questions around speakers and presentations and length or topics or what have you. Um, and so I will just say that for, um, I don't want to speak for Jen, but for CISA, I can confidently say that whatever we our speakers who come, um, who you request, first of all, we, we're going to send a speaker based on your group um, and the topics that you want to talk about. Um, we have, uh, since we, we focus and specialize in cybersecurity, there obviously are um, a wide range of topics and SMEs in our agency from, you know, how to um, capability or, uh, yeah, capability, uh, capacity building, excuse me, vulnerabilities, threats, um, you know, training, what have you, there, there's, there's a wide variety. So we will make sure the right um, person is connected with your organization to speak. We can do in-person speaking events, we can do virtual speaking events, and the content in whoever comes to speak to you um, will be tailored based on your need, the topics, um, and the audience. So um, while there may be some similarities just in terms of some of that top line messaging or, you know, what have you just kind of about CISA or some of the things that we're working on, um, really getting into um, the nuances of what your organization or your event topic is that all will be tailored. Um, and lengths can also be tailored. So it can be shorter or longer. Um, it can be all Q and A, it can be, you know, fireside chat, whatever, whatever you're looking for. 
And I'll just chime in and say for an NCA presentation, if you're joining one of our gamified presentations, there is no cost to attend. Uh, for individual or customized presentations, we do ask for a small honorarium, but it's certainly not prohibitive um, if um, that does not work for your organization. And we try to, to fulfill every, every request. So um, yeah, if you just uh, fill out our form, which will be in the slides again that we share, uh, just let us know about your event needs and we can talk through that. I also see a question here. Uh, can you give some specific examples of how to use positivity? Uh, so when we talk about positivity, again, I use some of the uh, negative examples not to use, like the the hacker in the hoodie. I think a lot of us have seen those kind of stock images of the, you know, the the scary person behind a computer and the code going on on the screen. Um, so even just replacing that with some positive images of, you know, people using technology in their everyday life makes it the message more positive and relatable. Um, also just use uh, examples of positivity can be talking about how these things are easy and achievable. Um, instead of focusing on all the scary bad guys that are out there to get you, focus on uh, how easy it is to enable multi-factor authentication, how it is possible to stay secure online, and how these things really do work and really do help you and help your family. So those are some examples that we use to uh, remain positive in our messages. Let's see, there's a question about the presentations for uh, doing community uh, trainings for teens, adults, faith-based organizations. So that is part of our volunteer toolkit. Um, I'll see if we can put a link in the chat, but that will also be shared afterwards um, and in the presentation slides. Um, I see there's also a question about uh, clicking the link to sign up to become a champion. There's no option to sign up. Uh, we apologize for that. We will make sure that is looked into and we will recirculate the link uh, after this presentation as well. Jen, there's a question about the NCA gamification presentation. Can you provide more info about that? Is that like an on-demand video? So we will have that. Um, that is not on demand, but we will have a series of them throughout the month. So you can sign up for a time slot that works best for you and your organization. It will be, uh, so we offer them um, multiple times each week. They'll be an hour long. And what you can expect there is, again, um, a kind of interactive questions and trivia and polls related to Cybersecurity Awareness Month um, and those four key behaviors. So we'll weave in also best practices for each of those behaviors, uh, some more information from the OBHAVE report, especially the new 2023 report, which will be out. So it's a, uh, a great opportunity to, uh, to educate employees in, in a fun, interactive way. But yes, that will be uh, not on demand, but free to sign up for any time slot during October. Um, the pre-recorded presentations will know they will be coming out for usage. Uh, is that a question about when it will come out? So this presentation, uh, the recording will be out by uh, by tomorrow morning. Great, thank you. <laughs> Someone asked for a Threads channel. Um, I have actually asked about that for CISA, I think. Um, working on that. So stay tuned. I, I don't know where things will land on that. I've talked to external affairs. Um, question for about convene. Will the convene conference have any virtual meetings? So we do not have any uh, virtual component for convene, unfortunately. So if you cannot attend in person, we do invite you to attend the October 4th virtual kickoff event. 
Um, someone asked about the date when we'll know things in September. Stay tuned. We'll have that um, coming soon. Will there be webinars during Cybersecurity Awareness Month as well as related to the theme? Um, Jen, you want to talk a little bit about what NCA has planned for Cybersecurity Awareness Month? Yeah, so we will use those uh, gamified presentations as our webinar. Again, completely open uh, for you to sign up for. Uh, we we hi highly encourage you to do so. Um, and we will have that uh, virtual kickoff event as well. Thank you. Um, for those that are asking for things now, if you'll reach out via the awareness um, and other um, and, and the NCA emails, we will follow up with you. Someone hosted a game show on their campus. That sounds cool. Someone asked about season uh, presentations. Again, I uh, don't want to speak for Jen, but I feel like we can confidently say that we'll tailor um, whatever you are looking for. So length, topics, focus areas, et cetera. Um, and speakers, you can request speakers from NCA and CSI. Someone, someone asked a question if it was an either or. Um, Do you know what languages the uh, material will be available in? Um, so we are um, in the process of starting to do translations right now. Uh, we will definitely have Spanish and we will have others um, coming in the coming weeks. Uh, we're going to try to have as many as we can um, possible by the time we launch. Um, definitely have Spanish and hope to have more. We are working literally on that as we speak. Someone uh, asked about putting materials on their internet staff learning pages. We highly encourage you to do so, um, to use the toolkit materials when they become available. Also any resources on CISA and NCA's website. Uh, we have you know, videos and lots of additional resources and toolkits as well that you are welcome to use. Um, I also see a question on here for NCA. Is there a deadline to put in a speaker request? Uh, there's no deadline. They are um, accepted on a first come first served basis. So if you're looking for an individual customized presentation, uh, we do ask you to get that request in as soon as possible. Um, there's also a question about a time for the cyber chat. So that will be at 2 p.m. Eastern and we will make sure that is up to date on our events page. Um, someone's asking how to request a speaker. Um, if you first for CISA, if you go to CISA.gov and then in the search bar, you um, type in request a speaker, um, you can get one that way. And then uh, you'll send an email to cisa.speakers, that's with an S. So C-I-S-A dot S-P-E-A-K-E-R-S at cisa.dhs.gov. Um. Someone asked about the difference about being a, a cybersecurity awareness month partner or champion. Um, that just, is, so um, this is kind of an informal definition. Um, I consider, you know, a stakeholder is literally everybody. So anyone who would um, be potentially receiving information um, about cybersecurity, um, everybody, you know, is, is a stakeholder because it impacts them um, or could impact them. Um, to be a partner is to help amplify the messaging and, and, and get, help get the word out, help to make people more aware. Um, you can use partner, champion. Um, I feel like they're kind of interchangeable. So it's whatever that looks like for you um, in terms of getting your people trained, putting stuff up um, on your websites or on social media or what have you. Um, so yeah. There's a question here, and I think I've seen a few questions about the password manager theme. Um, 
someone saying they don't want to, to use that one or don't know what to recommend. Um, so the key message is we'll be talking a lot about password managers, but if that's not something that fits in with your organization, you know, you uh, you can certainly customize the theme and don't have to talk about it. We also don't reckon, uh, recommend specific password managers, but we do recommend buyer's guides and websites like CNET and consumer reports for people to go to to find reputable password managers and do their own research. Uh, research. Jen, there's a lot of gamification questions. Um, is there information on nca.org um, just about gamification, different things about that? I just feel like that would yeah, so we do have some information about our own uh, gamified webinars. I know there are a lot of, uh, you know, different organizations that have run different, uh, you know, gamified content and have different programs, especially uh, that operate through security awareness companies. Uh, we do not have um, specific recommendations uh, for gamified content, but I do recommend if you work with a, a security company, a security awareness company to reach out to them and see if they have any gamified content that you can use. Um, at the very least, NCA also has a few um, word searches and uh, crosswords available if you wanna go that route for uh, cybersecurity games and education. Um, you'll uh, receive that if you are uh, subscribed to our, our mailing list. I was just trying to answer a question and I may have clicked in the wrong place. Um, it's CISA.gov, C-I-S-A.gov or staysafeonline.org. Uh, there are a few questions about announcing the the theme and materials, um, which uh, again, uh, for next year, once that theme is announced, you will be able to start using that right away to plan for for cybersecurity work in this month, twenty twenty four. So again, we ask you to to stay tuned. There's also a question here about a uh, simpler hashtag for Cybersecurity Awareness Month. We know that hashtag Cybersecurity Awareness Month is is certainly a mouthful, um, but it is the easiest way uh, for us to find your tweets. Um, you know, if it doesn't fit in it uh, for all of your posts, that's okay. Or if you want to, uh, we do uh, discourage uh, you from using acronyms like CAM, and there are other acronyms like. Uh, CSAM that refer to different things. So whatever you do choose to use, even if it's uh, something else, uh, we encourage you to stick with, you know, the words uh, spelling out cybersecurity, cybersecurity awareness, for example. Um, someone commented for the person who mentioned email fatigue. I don't know if they're still on, but uh, someone, they mentioned using internal social media like Yammer as a uh, successful way of promoting events. I know we only have a, a few minutes left, so we'll, uh, we still have a lot of questions in here that we will we'll try to keep answering. Um,
are the uh, there's a question are the gamified items only available during October or any time so right now we uh, only have gamified presentations uh, planned for October but if they are very popular and you're looking for more then um, I'm sure we can plan more for the rest of the year. Um, some people are also asking about communications calendars. Um, again, for the toolkit and materials, uh, please expect uh, those in the upcoming weeks. Uh, but in terms of a, a schedule and a calendar, typically on NCA and CISA's end, we start ramping up promotions for Cybersecurity Awareness Month in September, especially focusing on those four key messages, using those as our themes. Some people use them as, as weekly themes and split them up. But we will uh, then be promoting them throughout October. So um, there's no uh, specific communications calendar available in the toolkit, uh, but we do, you know, encourage you to follow along. Um, you know, if you want to start promoting things earlier or later, as soon as you have them, again, splitting uh, topics up into weekly themes, uh, you're, uh, you know, we encourage you to uh, work, do what works best for your organization. Uh, someone asked about a copy of the Q&A, uh, if it will be available after the webinar, it will be included as part of this recording. Um, and I think, unfortunately, that is all the time we have. We have a lot more questions. So again, uh, we will be sure to share all of our contact information again, all of these links and resources in our follow-up email. So please do not hesitate to reach out to us if we did not get to your question. Um, we are really excited to work with all of you on Cybersecurity Awareness Month and see all the great activities you come up with. Let us know too at the end of the month uh, what your successes were, what your activities were, and maybe we'll uh, be able to include that in next year's presentation. So thank you uh, to Sarah for co-presenting with me today. And thank you everyone for joining. Thanks everyone. Take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.